Hello guys, Boring Tommy here. I hope I'm not invading you with too many videos. I promise this is the last for a while. But I decided that finally I brought up this brought out this bike. I'm going to talk to you for a while. And I didn't want to do it in one single video because I learned that that probably doesn't pay off that well. So, a uh, couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, continuing my story. Um, first thing was about, well, finishing the story about this singer and why it has to do something with the uh, special rights of foreigners because that, you know, I'm going to explain to you really now. Um, well, after my teacher told me this was a famous singer and shit like that, you know, I left it, well, I didn't leave it there, I actually managed to go down to Taichung, where actually I live now, I used to live in Taipei at that time, um, about 150 kilometers down south, uh, because I saw that she had a concert. Now, what I got used to is that if you have a concert, then maybe that is a lead singer, and then you have a concert, you know? Uh, I didn't speak any Chinese at that time because I just started, literally just started my school like two days earlier. Um, so I didn't speak any Chinese and I just saw that there is, you know, her name over there and the place and um, I decided, hey, it's on the weekend, I'm going to go and see her. Actually, you know what, I have so little money as you know and the tickets were 500 and but I decided, you know, who cares? I'm going to pay for it. I want to see her, you know, she's, since she's the most famous singer, I want to see her concert. So I get down there, which was itself as uh, some big deal because I didn't know that when it's holiday, Taiwan highways were jam-packed at the time. They are still now, but they are much better by now because they have more train, they have high speed train, they have one more highway and everything. But 20 years back, 22 years back, it was a tragedy. I got on a bike at 7.30 in the, uh, in the morning. I thought that, you know, the, the 150 kilometers, you know, the, the concert started at 6 o'clock. I'm going down to Taichung and actually take a look. That was the plan. Instead, I got down after 5 o'clock, from 7.30 in the morning, after 5 o'clock in the morning, I was sitting on one single bus, getting down 150 kilometers, which is like, what, less than 100 miles. So that was really crazy for me. Anyway, I got there, and here came the next surprise. Well, it came gradually to me. Um, you know, I sit down, I got a very good seat because I bought a very expensive $500 ticket which was one of the most expensive tickets you can actually get. But I wanted to have a good place. So I was sitting on a fourth row and, uh, you know, somebody comes out, some, some, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, I don't know, some, some other guys, you know, introducing the acts and everything. So, I'm like, okay, let's hear this guy, and they are introducing somebody, of course, it's all in Chinese, and I don't speak a word, literally, so, and the, a singer comes out, well, I can see with one glance, it's obviously not her, so, you know, she sings like two or three songs, they chat a little bit, she goes away, I said, okay, now she comes, and the guys, you know, they, you know, the, the, they, they say a couple of words again, and then a guy comes out. I was like, no, it's not her, because it's a guy, obviously. So, the guy comes out, a couple of songs again, they start to talk to her, they talk to him, and then that happens like five more times. I'm like, he's not coming, maybe she got sick or something, and she's not going to come. Well, after a long time, she actually manages to show up. Um, and she starts singing. Now, I'm not going to jump to another thing right now, but I'm just telling you, she sings these two songs, and then she goes away. And then another singer comes out. Now, 
This was the time when I learned that in Taiwan, most of the concerts are like this. They are not one single person singing a concert, you know, having a concert. They actually have like five, ten different singers and acts, basically. You know, it's like a variety show instead of like a real concert. There are a couple of real concerts also, but this is the majority for local singers. They normally do it like this. So anyway, she comes out to sing, and I'm sitting on the fourth row, and she looks down and she recognizes me. Now that when it has that I'm a six foot three, six foot three foreign guy, she doesn't know too many of them, I guess. So while she is singing, she actually starts waving at me uh, from the stage, and everybody's looking at me. Who the hell is this guy? Of course, I shyly, just a little small hand uh, movement with my hand, I wave back a little bit, but you know, that's it. And before she goes away, she looks at me again, smiles and waves again, and then she goes away, as I said, after two or three songs. So I'm pissed off because it was only like two or three songs for what I spent endless hours on the bus and a lot of money. So I actually go to, go to the backstage and I say, I want to talk to that girl. Now again, if I'm a local person, they're just going to kick me out of the door. Instead, they brought me in right away. They fetched another girl who later I know, later I learned, I didn't even know at that time, that she was actually another famous singer. I saw her later all the time in this, uh, you know, on TV you could see a lot of concerts like this. So I saw her on TV and everywhere, so she was another famous singer, but she actually had me translate. And, um, uh, you know, I, we actually had like a nice chat for, I would say, five, ten minutes, and then I headed back home. Uh, now, again, I think that was my, uh, uh, no, let's continue. Uh, so, this girl goes back, I'm going back to school, and after a couple of days, my teacher says, she brings me a newspaper and shows me that the girl is in big trouble. She has throat cancer. Well, at least they found some uh, things in her neck and they are going to operate on her. So I, uh, I actually, you know, they actually made a concert with, for her, this time really just for her, a special TV, uh, 40 minutes event or something, um, where she was practically saying goodbye to everybody and, uh, and singing and, and, you know, interviews and everything. And then she really went and had, had a surgery. Now, there is a huge hospital in Taipei, um, which is actually belonging to the university uh, which I ended up going to. And uh, she, was, she was there. I knew she was there. So one day, a couple of days later, I'm on the bus, and again, I'm being the obnoxious foreigner, you know, with the special rights I'm always, I always am, or was at that time. So as I was sitting on the bus, I just decided, hey, there were a few cute girls over there, probably, I would say, 16 to 18 years old, and I was like, hey, if there are good, cute girls, I'm going to talk to them. Mind me, I did have a girlfriend at that um, I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't have a girlfriend just that time. I'll tell you about that later. Anyway, I, uh, I started to talk to them, uh, mostly English. Uh, as I said, you know, I, my Chinese was almost nothing. Uh, although it quickly improved, as I will tell you about it again later. But uh, it was still nothing. And um, I talked to them in English mostly, and um, basically we ended up saying, okay, they, they love this girl as well, I mean at that time she was very famous, and we ended up going to that hospital together to actually visit her. The hospital corridor was full with flowers, uh, we actually managed to, we actually bought some flowers, the three of us together as well. It was full with flowers, 
Uh, no, we didn't buy it together. Uh, I, bought, I bought some and they bought some. And um, there was a long line of people waiting, like, I don't know, 50 people, maybe 100 people, lining up and waiting to be able to go in, in like blocks of two or three people. And what happened was, again, the special rights of foreigners, as I'm waiting over there with them and chatting, and we are getting close to actually getting in, some guy comes up to me and says, hey, you know what, come over here and come to the end of the line, but then you go in alone. So I actually ended up, you know, I said goodbye to the girls because they went in, they were so excited, but uh, I actually waited until everybody left, and then I went in alone instead of like four or five people at the same time and just looking at the singer and just hi. I go in and we had a little chat. Her mom was there, her brother was there. We actually had a little chat. Um, she spoke some English. Um, I didn't really speak Chinese, but her brother was speaking English pretty well. So we were able to you know, talk a little bit. Uh, she was happy to see me, of course. Um, and of course we didn't talk about some very difficult topics, we were just chatting a little bit, like 5-10 minutes, and I went home. But, I told her I will be back. And as I, as I said, I was 20, you know, and although I didn't fall in love with her or something like that, but I had my time, I had a time, and I, I was actually fascinated by her, so I ended up going the next day. And the next day was actually Mother's Day. So I bought big, two big bucket, uh, bouquets of flowers, one for her and one for her mother. And this basically became a routine. I went there every day for a week um, for about, I actually spent, I ended up spending about half an hour in her room, practically had to be chased out by the doctor saying that she needs rest and medication or what, or what not. Um, and sometimes when even the doctor came in the middle, uh, they told me, okay, just wait outside for a while. I was chatting with her brother outside for maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And then I went back again and I, you know, we actually became, well, fast friends. But, uh, well, needless to say, when she left the hospital, um, that was it. I mean, we never, I, I never had her phone number, we never talked like that, you know, I, I could never actually look for her. I could, but that's, a, that's like, again, another story. Um, but uh, basically, that, uh, that was where the friendship ended, but for that week, I was basically almost, almost treated like her boyfriend. And I, even though I liked to believe at that time it was because I was handsome and you know she she felt something about me or anything like that. Obviously that wasn't the case. That was because I was a big ass foreigner. Okay, and that's there will be some more about the foreigner special rights in some other stories. You will see it as a as a theme coming back. But this was the first time I experienced it really first hand. I think that's it for today, and I'm going to talk to you later, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe my videos, if possible, click on the advertisement, and share it with your friends if you can. Thank you, and see you later. Bye-bye.